channel if you knew what it do so today i want to discuss all things pertaining to becoming a flight attendant um y'all go ahead and subscribe at the end of this video if y'all feeling the vibes and yeah let's get straight into it so i want to split this video up into three parts the first part will be the application process then the interview and then training so let's start off with the application process um the two questions that i get asked the absolute most number one how do i become a flight attendant and number two do you have to attend a flight attendant school well here's the answer to those two questions okay number one you literally become a flight attendant by just going online and applying as with any other job and number two no you do not need to attend a specific flight attendant school because the airline once you're hired, they're going to teach you everything that you need to know. Before I started this job, I also thought, you know, that you had to go to some sort of flight attendant school. And it was like a lot of bells and whistles and requirements that you had to meet. But now in 2023, I'll tell y'all, it's easier than ever to become a flight attendant. And I think especially after COVID, there was this extremely high demand for flight attendants, which is around the time I applied, like 2021, 2022. Pretty much everybody was having hiring events and trainings like back to back. Now, one thing that you do need to know is that most airlines only keep their application windows open for a certain amount of time that could be like a couple of days to like maybe a week and within those few days they are getting thousands and thousands of applications so it's definitely important that you um, research what dates that the window of your specific airline is going to open up and I would also recommend to apply directly on the website if you can I know there's like a lot of third-party websites that you can apply through like um, Indeed and zip recruiter and stuff like that but if you can go directly to the website I would say do that also know that you may be required to complete one of those assessment quizzes so yeah just be prepared for that all right so next I want to touch on some basic requirements to becoming a flight attendant you must be at least 21 years of age because you're serving alcohol um, you need a high school diploma or a GED you need a passport or a visa um, you do not need previous flight attendant experience you guys I know a lot of people think that you do but really all they're looking for is customer service they want to know have you dealt with people in the past because overall this job is very people oriented just a little on my employment history I've actually worked in customer service all my life um, my first job was at Sonic and then I ended up working at a Mexican restaurant and I kind of moved around there I was a host I was a server I was busting tables like I was just moving all around um, and then I went over to a hotel I started at the front desk and then I moved over to the bistro restaurant I tried out house housekeeping that was actually a lot of fun and then eventually I was promoted to operations supervisor so I oversaw those three departments um, and then yeah I came to this job so long story short if you have any previous customer service experience then you're already off to a great start the only airlines that may require more than that is gonna be like the private and the charter airlines you know the ones that fly around some very prestigious people all right so now let's talk about some outward appearances um, you do have to be between 4'11 and 5 feet tall minimum just because you have to be able to reach the overhead bin and I know you can't be taller than a certain height either I think like maybe 6'3 six, 6'4 six, or something like that um, just because I guess it'll be bad for your back as far as weight I've gotten a few questions about that um, I've had some people message me like hey you know like I really want to become a flight attendant but I think I might be too big or like what is the weight requirement you know how much do you have to weigh just know that this is not the 60s and 70s anymore or whenever they first start flying and you had to be this small like no it's literally not like that anymore all you have to do is be able to fit comfortably in the jump seat at least for my airline and that's of course for safety purposes so yeah if you can comfortably fit in the jump seat and you don't need any kind of seatbelt extensions or anything you good to go tattoos and piercings for some airlines you can only have the earlobe right here um, for my airline you can only have the earlobe I did have a nose ring before this job but I was not finna be taking that in and out all the time like it was actually pretty painful and it was too much so I just got rid of my nose ring and then tattoos you can't have any visible tattoos while in uniform for the most part I know they've been pushing to change that um, I think United has it to where you can have a visible tattoo if it's not bigger than like an ID card so slowly but surely you know what I'm saying but for now cover them up I do have a tattoo on my arm as well as my leg so wearing a long sleeve t-shirt or a sweater is pretty much a non-negotiable for me 
me. I also wear pants. I keep saying that I'm gonna find me a good pair of pantyhose so that I can wear my dress and I can wear my skirt. I literally just haven't worn them yet um, and I need to get them altered. But yeah, I feel like the dress and the thigh high boots combo in the winter, baby, 10 out of 10, y'all. So I gotta get me some pantyhose. But yeah, so the next thing is hair. Um, your hair cannot be longer than waist length. If it is, then you have to put it up. But it's really no more restrictions to how it's actually styled. So for all my black kings and queens, if y'all wanna wear y'all locks, y'all froze, twists, braids, all of that, you're safe here. Your nails have to be a sanitary length, you guys, not too long. Um, we actually, not long ago, we just got it to where we can wear unlimited nail art. So I know at first they said we could only do like solid colors, certain colors, and we can only have a design on one nail, but we just got it to where like, it's up, we can do whatever we want basically. So that was really cool. Makeup is definitely in the lookbook, you guys. I would say at least wear it to the interview, at least. I know if I got a report time at 4.30 a.m., I'ma throw on some mascara, lip gloss call it a day but yeah so for the most part just look professional and clean and like the beauty that you are all right so more requirements you have to be able to lift a 40 pound bag over your head and they'll show you how to do it you also have to pass a drug test um mine was on site at the interview i know some of them you had to like drive to the drug test or whatever but yeah just be prepared for that all right so that's everything that i have as far as the requirements and the application process um the second part that i want to go into is is the interview three questions that i get as far as the actual interview uh the first one how long did it take from completing the application to getting an interview number two what kind of questions did they ask and number three was it a one-on-one -on -one or like group interview or like a higher end event how'd it go my answer to these three questions is that it's going to vary per airline nobody does it the same way another thing i want to point out is that the hiring process of becoming a flight attendant is actually very slow it's not like any other job where you can start tomorrow start next week like the entire process usually takes like three to six months i applied to my airline at the end of august 2021 and i wasn't officially released to line until december December 1st that same year so it took a little minute as far as hearing back after your application it can take a few days to a few weeks because like I said they're sorting through thousands and thousands of applications if your interview is not virtual then keep in mind that you may have to travel to the interview it may not be in your city may not be in your state and wherever you go to get interviewed that does not mean that you're going to be based there you guys that just means that they have a hub in this particular city but keep that in mind that don't mean that you're going to be based there my interview was in Dallas is Texas I actually live in Houston so I was able to make the four-hour drive um, I stayed for the night in Dallas I was actually still working at the hotel at the time so I was able to get the little discount and yeah it worked out pretty good what kind of questions do they ask I can kind of give y'all my personal experience um, she asked me tell me a little bit about yourself the whole spill she also said this job may require you to relocate are you willing to do that I also got why should we hire you or why do you think that you're a good fit for the job and then it was mostly situational questions after that like tell me about a time when xyz or what would you do if xyz and i think that's basically because like i told y'all this is a very people oriented job now the interviews that you have in person will either be one-on-one -on -one, um, or a group interview that you have with the interviewer or it's going to be where you're interacting with the other applicants then sometimes it could be a mix of all of them it really just depends on how many people are there or how big the hiring event is um, mine personally was only only a one-on-one -on -one interview I think I heard for American they do it to where you have to interact with the other applicants and like set up a service card so I feel like that was pretty cool but yeah it's usually all kind of ways that the interview can be set up and if it's a bigger hiring event then I would say prepare to be there all day it's usually like an all-day affair and then at the end of the interview of course they will tell you whether you got it or not um, either on the spot or they might wait a few more days and reach back out to you so that can take also maybe a couple days to like a couple weeks me personally i got the job on the spot and i was kind of surprised i was like what so like basically they had us all in this room like once we finished interviewing um it was probably like 10 people in there and like one person came in like they called all of our names that did get the job they was like so and so so and so so and so christina clark come with me i was like ah oh, dang but they call us into this smaller room or whatever we all lined up against the wall and like he talking all sad and stuff at the beginning 
DNA. He was like, oh yeah, I got the job. And I was like, oh yay. But yeah, so that was my interview process. Um, just some basic tips for your interview. Um, look your best, you know, put on your best business attire and also try to relax and be yourself. I was like super nervous going in. And then on top of that, it was like, I really wasn't, I basically went in on some, okay, let's see what this is about type deal. Like I wasn't super pressed on getting a job. I kind of was just like interested in the process and everything. I really just wanted to get a feel on the whole interview process because I had planned on going to a few others as well, but I'll share my whole how I became a flight attendant story at the end. All right, y'all. So the last topic that I'm covering on how to become a flight attendant is the actual training. So congratulations. If you made it this far, that means you got the job, but hold your horses because you're not a flight attendant just yet. The final stage of <laughs> the final stage of becoming a flight attendant is going to be your training. Every single airline has their own training program. They have their own facility. So there is no need for you to go to a specific flight attendant school. If you wanna go work for Delta, they gonna teach you on Delta. You wanna go work for American, they gonna teach you on American. The only people that gotta do all that extra school is pilots. Now the time between you actually getting your yes and your first day of training this can be a pretty long period it could be like between two weeks to two months it really just depends on when your airline schedules you for training you guys definitely do not take this time for granted during this time you're going to be needing to do a couple of things the first one is going to be preparing for this lifestyle change overall you know if you're coming from like a typical desk job um becoming a flight attendant will be a lot different so just preparing for that the second one is going to be to continue to save money at your current job as much as you can because trust me you're going to need it and then the third thing you need to be doing is studying hey y'all I'm back sorry I had to take a little break my camera died but anyways what I was saying after you receive your CJO within the next few weeks they're gonna be sending you this huge virtual packet and in it is gonna be every single thing you need guys it's gonna include the training dates the location hotel information flight information um, different things to bring what to wear like it's gonna include all of that including the things that you need to study before you get to training on day one and then of course if you have any questions that aren't covered in their packet they're gonna have people for you to email so yeah that time that you have while waiting to go to training you should not just be sitting around looking cute like you got stuff to do baby so after my interview after I received my CJO it took like another week or two for them to send that packet with all of the information and then I had like three to four weeks from the time that I had received the packet all the way until the first day of training flight attendant training is usually four to eight weeks depending on your airline and it is not gonna be a walk in the park okay you're gonna be studying and scratching, studying and scratching. I'ma just keep it real, like the amount of stuff that you have to learn in such a short period of time is insane. But yeah, it'll definitely be nonstop studying. Um, my training was four weeks long in Orlando. Although it was pretty stressful, I can also say that I had a blast, you guys. Make friends, I cannot stress this enough. Making friends is gonna help you out so much in the long run, I promise you, even once you release the line. I was like really shy and introverted before this job, and so it definitely forced me to come out of my shell. I was determined to make friends and I had a really good time. We studied together um, on our off days. We would chill at the pool. We would go out. We would have a time. Make friends while you're in training. It's going to help you out so much mentally. Now the majority of what you learn in training is going to be aircraft familiarization and safety. They're teaching you about the different aircrafts, how to operate things, where things are located and then after that it's pretty much about saving people lives. Things like water and land evacuations, medical scenarios, de-escalation, all that stuff this is all usually done in a training facility and then once you're done with that you're gonna do something called your OE which is your operating experience during your OE is where you'll put everything that you've learned to the test basically and it's gonna be your first operating flight so you're pretty much going to operate this flight as if you were working it you'll have your instructors overseeing you during that and then you get your pass or fail so then once you're done with that congratulations you are now officially a flight attendant y'all you're now officially ready to be released to line so yeah you guys that's pretty much the process um put in your application wait to hear back for an interview do the interview um wait to hear back to see if you got the job or not you got the cjo 
wait to hear back for more training details finally get those wait for training it's just like it's a long tedious process but it's so worth it you guys and you'll be so happy once you finally receive your wings so before i go i'll give y'all a little backstory on how i became a flight attendant um i actually applied to this job on a whim like kind of just for the heck of it this was never my original like desired career i actually have a degree in hotel and restaurant management so um when i applied for this job i was working at a hotel at the time i graduated college in may of 2021 and i had already been at the hotel for like around three years or so and then eventually once i graduated they promoted me to operations supervisor it was cool but deep down inside i knew i was ready to dip like i was ready for a change i didn't know exactly what i wanted to do but i knew that i didn't want to go to another hotel i didn't want to go to another restaurant i also didn't want to report to nobody i didn't want nobody to report to me like i really just wanted to travel so i started taking different trips and solo trips while i'm still working this job you know and i had this plan that i was gonna take a trip like every other month um and i was gonna vlog them because i was for sure gonna do youtube so i was talking to my dad about it and god literally used him in this conversation he was like why don't you just apply to be a flight attendant and when he said that it wasn't automatically like a wow great idea you know i just kind of thought like okay i know i want to travel so technically this job would be the closest thing um to me basically getting paid to travel so i was like let me look into it so i started to check it out started to do a lot of research and the more i was researching i was like okay maybe i could do this so fast forward to the end of august i applied to three different airlines one was like an immediate no one was like give us a minute we got a lot of applications and then the one that was a yes is the one i'm here at now currently and i had went to this interview just to kind of like get some insight on how the whole interview process worked but i wasn't really like dead set on this airline or any airline at that it wasn't until after i actually got the job that god confirmed to me like this is where i want you this is where i've caused you to be okay y'all i gotta hurry up because my camera keep dying but yeah anyways um just the way that things were happening in my life around this time i knew that this was god calling me into my next chapter um to grow and find my purpose it was definitely scary at first i felt a lot of emotions but after pretty much my first day of training is when i just had this feeling of i'm exactly where i need to be so fast forward to now it's been a little bit over a year and a half with my airline um it'll be two years in december and i can genuinely say that i enjoy my job you know god kind of blessed me with this job out of nowhere like it was definitely nowhere in my post graduation plans but here I am and I love it now of course there are days that I don't feel like working I'm irritable I'm tired that comes with any job but overall I can say that this has been a great experience and then not only did God bless me with this job but he turned around and used me as a vessel so that I can teach you guys how to become a flight attendant as well I really just get on here and teach y'all everything that I've learned as a flight attendant so far. Um, and it's something that comes easy to me. So I really enjoy it. Um, all glory to God. So yeah, that's all I got for this video. Y'all comment down below if you have any other questions pertaining to becoming a flight attendant. Um, I love you guys so much and I'll see y'all in my next one.